So this problem says modern roller coasters have vertical loops. So here's the vertical loop. The, like the one shown here. The radius of curvature is small at the top, so it's a sharper curve at the top, and you see the curve is flatter here. It's smaller at the top than on the side, so that the downward centripetal acceleration at the top will be greater than the acceleration due to gravity. So there is at the top, anyway, the centripetal acceleration is given by V square R. And the idea is the smaller the radius of curvature, the greater the acceleration for a given speed. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> so the idea is uh, if the centripetal acceleration at the top is greater than gravity, then the the framework has to push down. The normal force will be in that direction. Okay. And um, so you won't fall off. Okay. Um, if, uh, on the other hand, if uh, if the centripetal acceleration is smaller than that, if this, if uh, if centripetal acceleration is smaller than gravity, v squared by r. Okay. Well, uh, you can't escape gravity that never gets turned off so what ha happens is this has to end up being equal to that so your radius of curvature gets smaller uh, and what that means is there is the track and if you're not going fast enough your radius of curvature gets smaller and meaning you go on a trajectory you go on a trajectory where you come off the track so this will make and that's when you fall. Okay, so you don't want that happening. So what you want is for the centripetal acceleration to be always greater than the than g. Okay. All right. So let's. Uh, <clears throat> greater than the acceleration, keeping the passengers firmly in pressed firmly into their seat. What is the speed of the roller coaster at the top of the loop if the radius of curvature is 15 meters and the downward acceleration of the car is 1.5 g? Okay, so now what they want you to do is what is your speed at the top such that the centripetal acceleration is 1.5 g? So there's your speed. V squared by r is equal to 1.5 g. Okay, let's. Uh, Add a page below. Okay, so v square by r equal to 1.5 g v square. The v is square root of 1.5 g r. 1.5 g is 9.8 meters per second square. And R in our problem is 15 meters. 15 meters. The radius of curvature is 15 meters. Okay, so this is equal to So you need to be going at 15 meters a second, 14.9 meters a second. Okay, part B says, how high above the top of the loop must the roller coaster start from rest, assuming negligible friction? Okay, so... Again... How high above the top of the loop must have? Okay, so here's the loop. How high above? Okay, so at this point, you need to be going at 14.9 meters per second. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Mm 
Okay. Um, so what we'll use is uh, okay. Well, we have to use work energy theorem. I was going to use conservation of energy, but okay. The work done by gravity is equal to change in kinetic energy. Now, uh, when an uh, object drops through a height h, <coughs> the work done by gravity is mgh, and that's equal to final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. Well, the object start, starts at rest, so its initial kinetic energy is zero, and the final kinetic energy is uh, we want one half mv squared, this squared. Okay. So, and this is the height above which, this is the height above which it started, uh, the point of the vertical loop. So, um, mgh is equal to one half mv squared. And you, the mass cancels, that's a good thing. Every passenger and every car is going at the same speed. So, h is v squared by 2g. Okay, that's the height above which you need to drop the car from. And so this is 14.9 meters per second squared divided by 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. And this works out to 11.3 meters. All right, uh, okay, part C says, so you need to, assuming, uh, assuming frictionless surface, you need to drop the car 11.3 meters away from a height, 11.3 meters higher than this point for it to be going at uh, the right speed or um, so you're going in this direction so you're dropping like that okay to be going at the right speed uh, if you drop it rather than 11.3 meters up you're dropping it from 5 meters higher how much energy did it lose in to friction its mass is uh, the mass of the car is that okay so let's calculate the energy loss to friction okay so if uh, gravity did this much work this is how much energy should be the final energy initial energy remember is still zero okay so m and uh, h now is h is 11.3 plus 5 meters okay. is equal to 16.3 meters okay so the final kinetic energy would be M is uh, M is 1.5 times 10 to the 3 kgs. Times 10. G is 9.8 meters per second squared, and H is 16.3 meters. Mm -hmm. So this is what the if you drop it from 5 meters higher, that would be the kinetic energy. So 1500 into 9.8 into 16.3, 2.4 into 10 to the power 6 joules. <coughs> So now we are assuming that uh, the actual kinetic energy is one half mv square. That is, you drop the car from five meters higher. You drop the car from. You drop the car from. So there is the car, and you dropped it from there, which is sixteen point three meters higher. And your velocity still is 14.9 meters per second. 
okay so the kin kinetic energy this should have been the kinetic energy and a frictionless surface if this was frictionless this should have been the kinetic energy but the kinetic energy is actually this so let's uh, calculate this kinetic energy one half 1.5 into 10 to the power 3 kg times 14.9 meters per second square okay. Seven into ten to the power six joules. Oh. Oh, this is this is 10 to the 5 so that's what was wrong 10 to the 5 joules okay and uh, so now this this makes more sense 1.7 times 10 to the power 5 joules okay so the loss in kinetic energy due to friction is 2.4 minus 1.7 into 10 to the power 5 joules which is 0.7 into 10 to the power 5 joules so roughly uh, if you divide this number by that that's roughly one well a little over one fourth roughly one fourth so you're losing 25 percent of your energy to friction okay that solves that problem